Have you ever thought of the different products you could make out of yarns? To me, I thought we could only make sweaters and tablecloths. But in today's program, Quinta Okech tells us a different story. So Quinta, what kind of products can we make out of this? Okay, yarn has a history of, from, from, from far away uh, many years, yarn has mostly been used to make uh, tablecloths. Mostly you'd see grandmothers making them. They will make sweaters for their kids and things like that. But in today's world, yarn actually has been modernized to make a lot of other different things. For example, we have flowers that are made out of yarn. Being that yarn is many, very many different colors, so that can actually be, be customized to different colors, to flowers also. We also have, currently we're also making dresses, modern dresses out of yarn. They are also making um, home decorations like curtains, table mats, and all that. So yarn is actually something that you can make a lot of things out of yarn. As long as you have the creativity, everything is possible. I like the point you said about grandmothers. It was considered an art where only grandmothers and mothers used to make it. But now you as a young person, tell us about your story. Okay. Um, the main one of the reasons why I started to crochet because I felt like crocheting is an art that shouldn't just be left in the past. It's an art that started a long time ago. We all know it from grandmothers, but nowadays I thought of how how can I can we keep on going with on with this art? So that's why the, the, the modernization of the yarn came in. Personally, I make uh, I make outfits for my love of, of fashion. I use that to make outfits out of the yarn, modern outfits that include dresses, include modern sweaters that people wear nowadays, a lot of other things as well, yeah. Okay, so if I were to give you an order to make a dress, mm -hmm. so how long does it take to make one? Uh, how long it takes in making things is actually very different. If I'm going to make a dress, a full dress, that will it means I'm going to take a lot of time in making the, the dress. It, it's actually a process. So when I get an order, I'll just take you through the process. When I get an order from a client, okay. the client tells me the kind of design they want or the kind of outfits they want. I now draw it and come out. Uh, when I'm drawing, I get to know the measurements. What am I going to use? In Okonga, my own rule, if you don't have the measurements, I'm not going to make the outfit mm -hmm. unless you send me the measurements because I don't want to who catch in any metagenesa outfit for eight hours only for you to tell me it's not fitting because you don't you didn't give me the right measurements. Mm. So when I prefer measurements kwanza. So take us through the process of making a product like that. Okay for example I just tell you about this. This mm -hmm. is currently a, a dress. It's it's a for for a client she wanted like a maxi dress okay. for a birthday but mm -hmm. black and white. How is that a dress again? It's a dress mm -hmm. Currently you can't really see, but this is the upper part. I'll just try and show you. May I try and see how you can see that? Of course. Okay. The upper part? Yeah. Oh, okay, the bust. okay, okay. Different colors. Yes. Ah, so how can we end up with Yes, yeah, so I, I always make them, they make making different pieces. Mm -hmm. Then I will join them to form a dress. So currently I'm just making the pieces. Mm -hmm. After I've made all the pieces, they're connected. Mm -hmm. Once they're connected, we get our dress okay. here. Let me show you. Any busts, okay. one bust. Oh. This is another. Oh, impressive. Yes. Oh. So he already nisha form bust. Oh. So I'm making the body. Oh, okay. So I'll make it akuja he v yende from waist yende to hips yende di chini. When I have this in full, uh -huh. and this in full, I now connect, connect them. them. I love they form a perfect dress. Okay. Yes. So, let's talk about this one. About this. Is that a sweater or what is it? This is like a sweater top. Oh, okay. An off-shoulder sweater top. Mm -hmm. You can just see it. Uh, so, you so, this here, I make an elastic. Oh, nice. Yeah, so you can see in elastic. When I'm going to wear this, mm -hmm. it's going to fit 
me perfectly. Okay. Yeah. So do you choose the color for your clients or they choose it for themselves? Some clients actually, they they wanna come and just choose for me the color or others will actually tell me, I want that in green mm. or I want that in another color. So the beauty about e e crochet is like at any point you can get any color you want. It's so colorful, kuna orange, kuna mm. all the color that you can think of, kuna blue, kuna so it's it's actually a place where you can play with different colors to come up with different design. If anyone wants, they can check out my page in IG. In IG at Crochet Lux, you can I just see the the, the art. You can see the way where, where I'm playing with the colors, nice. what I'm coming up with. Yeah. What about this? What is this? This is a skirt. Oh. This Hi, is a skirt Okay, this is nice. You also do this? Yeah, so this is just the design of the skirt. Uh -huh. It's like you can flip it. Nice. To, to it looks very, very difficult to do. Is it? It, it, it no, It's not. Like I told you, it's, it's, it's a skill. Nikendelea uh kukua, -huh. I can begin to make more complicated designs. And also, I have to know um, what do my clients want you get so when i'm when i when i'm doing that drawing helps me come up with that and then after i draw is when i start to create so this can take a long it can take uh, five hours it can take 10 hours it can take five days it can take a week it depends with actually the the design of the outfit and how long the outfit really actually takes to make and how does that affect the cost range of course that affects the cost range if i'm going to take a lot of hours making a uh, an, a, a garment or a dress probably, I'm going to charge more for it because um, whatever you're paying me as a crochet artist is you, you're buying the art, you're really not buying the, 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 the outfit, you're buying the art because when I'm making a crochet outfit, it, it's like I'm, I'm giving a piece of me to the, to the art itself. That means uh, there are some moments where I get frustrated, I'm making a, an, a, an outfit and then it's not working out the way I want it. So it means I'm also giving out part of myself. So when you're buying a crochet outfit, you're not just buying the garment, you're buying an art and that's what is actually going to cost you. So that actually costs more. Yeah. And there are different forms of art. Why crocheting? Crocheting is a very fascinating art. First of all, if I just trying to explain, so when I started crocheting, I started crocheting four years ago. When I started out, I, I, I used to have issues. Uh, for example, I couldn't get my, my, my measurements right. Every time I would make an outfit, they would come out smaller or maybe larger than, than the, the, the one I intended to make. So over time, crochet is a fascinating art, being that it, it grows. It, it, it feels like a, a small child actually growing. That's how I can really tell my story. Because when I started out four years ago, I couldn't make perfect stitches. I couldn't make perfect measurements. But now when I look back, it, it feels like it's, it's gradually increasing. The skills, they're gradually increasing. And then when you look at a crochet outfit, there's just some uniqueness and, and it's so amazing. I can't really explain it, but that's the, the, the beautiful thing I love about crocheting. It's such a beautiful art. I really can't get to explain that, how fascinating it is. I don't know if other people see it as well. But as for me, I feel like it's a very fascinating art that I would like to continue making for a while. Okay, most of us are used to cotton clothes, like the ones we have. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is yarn, niuzi, kunashimo. So how can you, how do you go around that? Yarn, okay, that's, that's actually is because people don't really know much about yarn. They are yarn made out of cotton. Mm -hmm. They are yarn made out of silk. They are yarn ma made out of a lot of things. It's because it's modern times. Yeah, Kitambo, we used to think uh, yarn is just made out of, uh, that's a cleric actually, the one you're holding right now. But mm -hmm. yarn can be made in other different forms. We can have a cleric, we can have cotton, mm -hmm. we can have silk, we can have nylon, we can have a lot of things out of yarn. Yeah. So you work with a cleric or yeah. you work with all of them? It depends with what I'm making. If I'm going to make a baby's cloth, for example, a baby's dress, mm -hmm. I'm going to use a much finer yarn and that's cotton yarn. It's softer, it's, you know, so actually the type of yarn also dictates what you're actually making. If I'm going to make something else, I use a different type of yarn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how is the market for your business? The market is tricky, actually, because this is an art that I think there's stereotypes still around it. 
when you think of crocheting, you just think of somebody sitting down and uh, using a hook, probably grandmother picture. So when you modernize crochet and you bring it in a form in a modern time, so you're going to make an outfit out of something that has been thought to be of the old times, people begin to ask questions about it. So actually that's the way the market is being affected because of the stereotypes. Um, so when, I, when I'm going out there as a crochet artist and I'm looking for a market to sell my product, I'm actually looking for people who know what art is, not somebody who wants to buy a garment. I'm not, I don't want to sell to somebody who wants to buy a garment. I want to sell to somebody who's fascinated by art, who knows the amount of energy I'm going to put in the garment, who knows that I'm going to use creativity when I'm making the garment. Somebody who understands art, and that's my market. That's the people that I want to target, not just anybody else. Okay. Yeah. I would love to say that I was one of those people who thought about crocheting as a grandmother sitting. So I'll ask you, do you ever get bored or are there any other challenges that you go through? Of course, there are a lot of challenges. Just from the point that you said, you mm -hmm. have to sit to make a crochet outfit. Actually, one of the things that crochet has taught me, the values that I'm getting from this as being just a crochet artist, I've learned discipline. I've learned commitment. Nice. Because I have to sit down and make this outfit. If I don't feel like doing it, how am I going to complete my outfits? I've loved, it has also improved my creativity. So apart from just crocheting for the other things, there are values that you get out of crocheting. You learn to be committed. You learn to be disciplined. You learn to be creative. You learn a lot of other things as well. Yeah. So being a student of media, how are you able to balance produ uh, producing your product, the marketing and studies? It's crazy actually, because uh, as an artist, I'm, I'm using this as a crochet. I'm, I'm taking this at my, as my brand. Being that it's a brand, I have to, I, I, am, I am the producer, I am the marketer, I am that, I'm doing all the things, like a one man person's business, you know. Mm -hmm. So currently it's still hard. But one of the things that have really helped me to balance as being a student with this art, it, it has been that planning is one, one important thing that I have got to, like, to, I have got to be with it and to learn how to plan so well. Planning has helped me a lot in balancing because I know when are my classes coming up, when do I have clients who want one, two, or three things, how do I, am I going to make that? And how do I cooperate that between the times that I have for my studies and the time that I have to create? Mm -hmm. So planning has really played a major role in my life to enable me to balance between my academics and also to, and, and my creative side. You've said that crocheting has helped you in discipline and planning. What other aspects has it instilled in you? Okay, greatly. Crocheting has helped me personally with my mental health. When I, when I was just starting out in school, I had some really weird mental health issues. I don't know, it was just, and, but they actually mental health is, a, is, a, is currently a, a problem that is affecting many of the youths. So when I just, uh, before I started crocheting, I was dealing with a lot of mental health issues. And that means depression. I was that one person that would just stick in the house the whole day, you know, to go for classes and don't do anything. Like, by that time, I really didn't feel like I, want, I wanted to engage with the world. I felt like uh, I, I really wasn't having my grip on reality. And uh, the times were really tough. The times were hard because um, there's no one I could talk to. Because, you know, things like depression and stuff, I think that people are still frowning upon. You will go and tell your friends, and they will be like, "Where we are, na dipoo, nchiko we, ushiku na depression, depression you gonja out hakuna pesa." That's what they tell you probably. Okay. But at the end of the day, you you're suffering. You don't really know how to get your grip on. You don't know how to start, what to do, and how to move on. Mm -hmm. So in a way, that crochet really helped me. That's actually when I started to to crochet. I just thought, yes, I don't know what the future holds for me because actually that's really what depression you you're anxious about the, the the future and maybe you're sad about the past yeah so it's really a lot and, and so i said i don't really know what the future holds i really don't know about that i know of the past but i'm not really going to let the past drag me down so the only way that the, where i really got my my strength back is through crocheting because i said i'm sleeping the whole day if i could just make a bralette. 
that's you know the swimming yeah yeah, yeah i make yeah. a bralette if i did it today i can do it tomorrow and i can do it the next day and that's how i got my con- confidence back and that's how i started to live to live again so yeah i think crochet is just a big part of my life and it's an art i wouldn't just to want to push out and 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 and, and and, and take it out because somebody said it's just you're just sitting and crocheting. I feel it's it's a big impact and 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 I would like to say it for someone out there who's currently dealing with depression. Just find one thing that you can do. Anything, even if if it's just small. If you do it today, you can do it tomorrow. Repeat the same thing you did, and if you do it after a period of time, you'll find yourself back again, feeling happy again feeling that at least you can do something for yourself. So yeah, it gets better. Yeah. I would love to congratulate you for being a hero and standing up for yourself and choosing something better. I would really love to congratulate you, you for doing that. So where do you get your clients from? So my clients mostly get them online. Yes. Um, an online presence uh, gets me to my clients because uh, like I told you before, Crochet is an art. You need to really find people who know what art is. And you don't just find people like that any, anyway. You have to sell your product, put your product out there. Tell people why somebody has to choose you. Currently, there are so many other crochet, people who crochet. There are so many other people. So if I'm going out there to get my clients, first of all, I need to tell them I'm selling art. I'm not selling a garment. So I need a specific kind of people that know what I'm actually selling. They know the advantage of something that is handmade and they also know the value of art. And also another thing, somebody who can actually pay me for my price. Because I am not going out there to just sell. I need somebody who can get to the price. Yeah. I love the fact that you're an art enthusiast. I was also once an art enthusiast, Fanika, but uh, I love how you do it. And out of it, are there any other art activities or some other activities that you're involved in? Other activities? Currently, I, I really won't say, because you know with the nature of crocheting, it's really hard to get around doing other things. My, actually, currently my life is around crocheting, at academics, I wouldn't really tell I'm expecting other type. Uh, I'm doing other types of art, but I'm a person who just love art naturally. I love art. I love the simple things of life and, and all that. So uh, with that, I get to whatever crocheting helps me. With, if I see something outside of nature that is art, I can implement that into crochet. So actually, crochet is a broad. I, I see it as a broad way of expressing my. Uh, my creativity and also art as a whole because if I can make flowers out of crochet that's yeah. like just art in nature brought into crochet yeah yeah so how do you plan to sustain your business going forward um, since I'm still studying right now it's mm. kind of hard I'm, I'm still struggling with the marketing I'm still struggling with production and all that but I'm thinking that when I'm done with my studies my plan now that is when I'm done with my studies, I can actually involve other people as well that also creators of, 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 of art, like crochet, I mean, other crocheters, so we can come up and uh, start something together. You know, when you're, you're, we are around two to three people, five people, it's, uh, it's clearly that you can get more done compared if I'm just one person. Mm-hmm. So the, the, the way that I want to expand is by involving other crocheters as well. And after involving other crocheters also, we can also have people who can help with advertising and marketing. So I'm seeing it as something that I want to create a brand out of it. Mm -hmm. And not just a one-person brand, but I also want to involve other people. So that's actually my plan. So seeing that you have made this for yourself, you have created something good for yourself, what can you tell other people who aim to do the same thing as you have? I'll just say... um, the times are tough currently. The times are really tough. Um, everything is changing drastically, economy and all that. I would just say, if you have something that you can do, whatever that is, it's, it's a modernized world currently. We have, we have internet, whatever you can do, 
just do it and show it to the world. You never know actually if you begin loving this thing that you're doing or somebody else may just like it. So anything that you you find your hands to do, you don't really have to wait for white collar jobs or stuff. Anything that you can do with your hands or anything that you can do, just do it and show it to the world. Thank you so much, Quinta. This has been very informative. Personally, I am challenged. Are you challenged out there? Take it upon yourself to do something productive with your hands that will make you even better each and every day. This has been Youth in Action. I am Nyangweso Grenis. This is the way to do it. This is the way